Hey guys, I have a really exciting uh, surprise for you today. This is something I've been trying to do for, geez, since last summer, and that's to actually have a one-on-one -on -one interview with Caleb Leverett, also known as the Notorious Dad. Um, I have a video where I um, took some of his uh, uh, experiences that have been online and pulled it or called it down into little experience or and the little segments to, to talk about his story. But today we get to talk to the man himself to really deep dive into, you know, how he dealt with it, what, uh, you know, lessons learned on it and how if you're going through this in your process, to give you somebody you can look at to see who actually was able to persevere through some pretty traumatic experiences and ultimately get custody of his kids, which was a mutual decision. And we'll get into that later, but um, it's a really incredible story. But a little bit about Caleb. Caleb Leverett has a YouTube channel of about 110,000 subscribers. Uh, that, a lot of that just happened in the last year. There's a lot of stuff going on with him that we'll be able to get into, which will really kind of make it uh, apparent why his growth has been. Um, four years ago, he had a video about his 14-year-old um, son at the time, Parker, who was basically standing up for his rights, and it was a viral video that went viral multiple times, and uh, really kind of, I know it didn't start this, but this was like the flashpoint where a lot of people really learned about Caleb's story, and you know, he really advocates nonviolent parenting and how to build relationships with his kids. And I really want to get into that. Uh, you know, and that's where he's focusing on building those positive relationships with your children and allowing them to basically be their own person. And the thing is, is that last year when I, when I first learned about this story, it was, you know, things seemed like they were calm, but it was like two weeks after I made contact with, with Caleb to see if I could make that video I did last year the whole situation started again with his now 14 year old son blaine and it kind of like rehashed this whole thing and ultimately he was able to win custody of his kids so we're going to jump into this and uh so welcome caleb thanks for joining uh joining the program and allowing us to to talk and hear about your story Blaine, thanks for having me always always an honor Oh, thanks. I really appreciate it. And, and one, you know, you, you guys, if you haven't seen the video I did and, and just to throw that out there, cause I know a lot of people are going to come to this to, to see you, Caleb. And, and I mean, my channel is focused on helping people in the early stages of their divorce, dealing with a toxic narcissistic type person. So like when I made that video of yours, I was taking your segments and I was adapting it to my audience to try to get, say like, look guys, here's the, here's the pitfalls. If you do certain things, or this is look at how this guy is just going through this and at the time you i think when i made that video you ultimately got custody or was awarded custody of your son blaine and to show look you know you can persevere it may seem like a nightmare and you can't persevere so anybody who's coming in on that that's what this channel is about and if you're really in on it subscribe and and uh, uh hit the bell notification so you can hear what's going on if you don't know who caleb leverett is i highly encourage you to go i'll put a link in the uh, uh the the little card so you can get to his channel so anyways what what I wanted to ask you initially on your divorce is, you know, whenever it first happened, and, I'm, and, and we're not going to get any bashing. I know you said, you know, some things are off limits, but, but did you think whenever you divorced your ex that it was going to be difficult or did you think it was going to be amicable? Oh, I, I, I pretty much knew it was going to be difficult. Uh, oh, okay. All right. See, because I know a lot of people tend to think they're like, well, it'll calm down and it doesn't. So, I you know, calm down, but I, what was that? I wanted it to calm down, but I, I could see the writing on the wall. It took see, and I think what you said there is is in, is important because a lot of times people think it is going to calm down, right? So you acquiesce on certain points, and and you're like, okay, this will, you know, the stupidness will stop. I because I know that, that that's kind of what happened with me. So w w the next thing I want to ask you is being denied access to your kids. You know, how did you? fight to maintain a, a, a relationship with them because it, it seemed like from what I've seen in some of your videos and maybe I'm wrong that you really didn't have a lot of uh, you know reoccurring access with your kids during the beginning stage or did that just get progressively worse uh, I had I had the Texas standard possession in the very beginning okay but I also had uh, two thousand six hundred twenty five dollars a month in child support and two thousand dollars a month for alimony for Wow. 10 or 12 years. Ouch. So, you know, I picked them up every Thursday. I had them first, third, and fifth Fridays. I'd take them to school on my, uh, on the Mondays that I had them. And eventually 
it didn't take very long and I went broke. I lost my business. Yeah. I did remarry, uh, as did she, we were, we were within a month or so of each other. Um, and basically what it boils down to, and I get some crap about this, but I had to sell time with my kids in order to get rid of the alimony and lower. Oh, no, I, I, yeah, I've heard of that. I mean, and you know, but the thing is you have to make the best decision you can. So, I mean, I don't really think that's a fair argument when you're just trying to make the best of a bad, dis- bad situation and you're making decisions to try to stay afloat. I mean, you know, and that's, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming in hindsight, would you have done something different in that? Or would you have agreed to that? See, and that's, yeah. No, I wouldn't have done anything different. Uh, oh, really? Okay. I would, have, I would have made better choices as a very young man getting, choosing a mate to <laughs> babies with. And again, I'm not, I'm not slamming anybody. I'm just right, right. encourage people, be careful when you're very young, you think you're in love and you think you just can't live without this person and you'll do anything to please them. <laughs> and that's, right. That, that, no, I hear you. I hear you on that. Yeah, that's the best thing is if you can make the make uh, different decisions going forward. Yes. But uh, hindsight, right? And who you are, and if you see the the telltale signs of it not working out, be the bigger person and let that person go. And not you don't have to do it in a mean way, but yeah, if you're fighting in the early on stages, like big time arguing, fighting disagreements on philosophical ideas, religious ideals. Oh, okay. Not a good match. Okay, so you saw those warning signs early on then. I I think most I people do. I have, I guess, but I was I was a very naive person. I was raised to be very naive. I was raised to be very sheltered. I wasn't allowed to see rated R movies until I was well almost graduated from high school. And I think oh, okay. it's a horrible idea to pretend to your kids that the real world doesn't exist doesn't exist (laughs) you get involved with the family courts and you're locked and then you find out all too well how (laughs) real and mean and nasty the real world can be yeah that in family court what you think is fair and what they think is fair is entirely two different things yes so on that you know i was uh, so i I know you have a bunch of other videos and I've seen some of them like with Parker even younger and it and so I think some people when they see um, Parker stands up for his rights that video you know it's a very polarizing video and even even the, the on the the comments on my channel on the the aggregate basically clips of it you know there are people who who, who look at that and they think they, they jump to different conclusions and one thing I, I think I noticed is you were dealing with Parker really not want, I mean, wanting to spend time with you prior. Cause I remember watching another video where and I don't remember what the timeline was where he was getting out of the van. He wouldn't go in the house and you're like, buddy, you know, you ha- I can't, you have to go. I mean, so how did, how That's was that dealing with it? Cause I'm assuming um, that, that you tried to talk to her. I mean, what did you, okay. So let me, so instead of putting words in your mouth prior to that Parker stands up for his rights video, what did you try to do to rectify that situation? Uh, he, We'd been divorced at that time, oh gosh, six years or something like that. And he'd always, yeah, he'd always wanted to live with me. And I, right, I'd been sued several times and gone through the courts and lost everything. And I simply, I, like I stated in the video, I, I couldn't afford it. And right. No, I understand that. I mean, I yeah, and I, and I asking, you know, on a personal level, can he come live with me? And it was always, I mean, just, you can watch the video. It's no, 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 no. It was always no. Right. Yeah. And I, and that, and that, cause I saw that for, I mean, when I watched that video, I mean, I know the frustration I have it. It's like when you're trying to deal with somebody and you know, going back to family court is, is incredibly expensive. I mean, I know we're, we'll get into what you had to go through recently. I mean, it's not cheap. I mean, you know, and you're talking about thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. And if, and if the other person isn't going to agree, then, you know, it even, it just starts going through the roof. I, so I absolutely understood when I watched that video, see, I had a different take on it. I mean, some people are like, oh, that's abusive. And I'm like, well, no, I mean, it's a guy who's trying to deal in the confines of the situation he's dealing with and making the best decisions out of, you know, out of bad decisions. So, I mean, I, I completely understood, understood that. 
So, however, the thing is, and this is the next thing I want to roll into, and this is how you ended up getting your, your, uh, your, your hashtag or your name, is there was a consequence for that. I mean, you guys, you got to hang out with, or Parker got to stay with you for a few months, but when you finally went to court, and your ex basically, she went for the jugular, it seems like. it. You know, how did that play out? I... I just I was getting sued for him not getting out of the truck. Right. Uh, we're in court. I found out in court that I, they attempted to get a grand jury indictment against me for kidnapping. <laughs> Thankfully, the grand jury saw the video and said, "No, we're not going to." No. This guy. And at the time, I was like, I, I didn't understand what was being said. My lawyer had to explain it to me. I was just I was ignorant of it. But, yeah. Uh, we went to court assuming that, you know, we've got the evidence. The cops told us that we are free to go. I was free to leave with my son. Right. And not only did it backfire, it completely backfired in the most horrendous way. Judge Whalen, he was obviously ticked off about some of my responses, uh, of, uh, some of the, the comments on my YouTube channel. And said the, there's no relief granted, and the 14 year old child is to be returned to his mother at five o'clock today. And that gavel came down, and it was 4:45. I was given 15 minutes to say goodbye to my son. Oh wow! Given permission to move to San Antonio, which was completely outside of our divorce decree. Wow. And so, so that video where I, I think the title of it was. Uh Parker versus Parker and the man that was the that was the day of that court hearing Parker versus the man yes see I didn't realize that I I assumed you guys had the court hearing and then they set a date so that happened right then and there and and I tried to record after I knew I wasn't allowed to record in the courtroom right as I exited Parker was on the outside and I had to give him this devastating news oh man he was getting really, really, really upset, and I had to hold him and, and comfort him. And then right. I tried to record, and these cops told me, you can't record in here. And I'm like, what about these news people with the tripods over here? Uh, can yeah. I record and I can't? And so that's when I realized the family court at, in, at that time was stacked completely against me. So yeah. I went until we exited the building, crossed the street into the parking lot where I knew I was safe to record then. And that's right. where the Parker versus the man video came to play. Yeah. And if you guys haven't seen those, I mean, anybody who's going through this, it's, it's hard to watch. Um, you know, I, I, in my other video, I made a, a comment about it being triggering and got some grief for that. But I mean, realistically, people who are dealing with this, when you're watching it and, you, and you're experiencing this and you're watching the pain, you know, and you're in your eyes and in Parker's, it's uh, it's it's pretty devastating. So when so I, I know shortly after that, I think shortly after that, that's when you the, the whole civil contempt. Did that happen as a result of this or did something happen later that where you ended up, I mean, just so you guys know, I mean, if you haven't seen his story, I mean, he was basically put in jail for 60 days for civil contempt of court for trying to have a relationship with his kids, which is just insane. And well, as a result of that, that's when you got the, the name Notorious Dad. Yeah, fo- following Parker getting ripped away from me in August 2014, I believe. Right. Two or three months later, I don't know. Maybe it was six months. It, it's it's been so long now. No, yeah. it, it was in May the following year. I was still being sued, and I tried to settle it. Tried to settle, it, and I was still being sued. And in the meantime, some supposed anonymous people posted a video on YouTube that threatened her and her husband and the judge. It's been, since been taken down. I still don't know who it is. I don't really care who it is. Yeah, it's kind of irrelevant at this the, point. The judge had to resign or recuse himself. And so they set, they put in place a fair judge. Right. And Judge Rex was the one who watched the video of, or the clips of it where the officers, Brandon Spinks, said, I was free to go. I had Brandon Spinks on the stand. He right. Said, yes, basically said, Yes, Your Honor, that is me in the video. Yes, Your Honor. I told Mr. Lever and his son he was free to go. And he basically said, Doesn't matter. 60 days in jail. 
And now, so did you, were you, were you expecting that or was that a complete shock? No, no, <laughs> I wasn't expecting it. I've never, I've never been arrested before. I've had maybe a couple of stop sign tickets in my life. Wow. And even the bailiff, they're one of the, that put me in the cuffs while they were booking me, looked at me in the eye and said, I've seen a lot of these and I cannot believe what I just saw. Yeah. Hey, two of us, buddy. And they, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think I saw a video where you were, you were, you were driving and you, you were in your, I guess, motor home and said, well, if you don't see me, I'm in jail. Was that around that time or was that a different time that you were worried about that happening? No, at that time in that video in my motor home, I suspected since all the cards were stacked against me anyways. Right. I, suspected I was going to go back to jail because I went to jail for like four days and bailed out. I okay. then appealed to the Eastland, Texas appellate court and they said they didn't care. So I appealed wow. to the Texas Supreme court and they said, eh, it's under six months in jail. We don't really care. We got better things to do. And I, I seriously contemplated going to the, the United States Supreme court. I'm just poor. And yeah. I ran out. And so it came down to it. Uh, I don't have any other options. I've got to do my remaining 56 days in jail. And while I was in jail, the inevitable question always comes up, what are you in for? Right. And I was straight up and I told them, civil contempt to civil court for being a good dad. And nobody believed me at first. Oh, I bet, yeah. Until the, the, until the cops or the, uh, the jailers or, or detention officers looked it up, right? Right. And well, I kept talking to them about it, but only because they kept asking me about it. And what happened was the jailers went home and watched my YouTube channel. Right. And they collected well, several of them came back and were talking to the inmate saying, yeah, no shit. Leverett does not deserve to be here. He's just in for being a good dad. And yeah. so uh, at, at, towards the last few weeks of me being in jail, when the new arrivals would ask, "What's he? What are you in for?" I didn't even have to say anything because I'd made friends with the oh, blacks, okay. <laughs> with the West Texans. I made friends with all of them. Everybody but the pedos. Right. Yeah. I said no, fucking Larry. He's here. He's here. For he's being legit. A good, a notorious dad here. That's and awesome. Yes, and so it kind of stuck. So, so that's what I. Okay, so that's the next thing I wanted to to get into. I mean, so. You know, your, your story is kind of like the worst case scenario for a lot of people. I mean, people in the beginning stages of this are, are worried about, you know, what you're talking about. How in the world, I mean, how did you, how did you keep going? I mean, how, where did you find the strength and the perseverance to deal with this? Even back when I was naive, I, I, for whatever reason, I realized that people, young children that had parents who cared about them, called them, loved them, uh, went out of their way to help them, mentored them. Right. Ultimately grew up without having daddy issues or mama issues. Yeah. And I can't help if anybody, you know, any of my kids have mama issues. I'm not the mom. Right. Yeah. But I knew that I could help with them not having daddy issues when they got older. And so that is exactly what drove me. I, other than being in jail, I never missed visitation. Like maybe once or twice I tried to rearrange or swap because I had something going or whatever. But it's just that's kind of the weird thing about it. I was put in jail for being a good dad, going against the quote unquote orders, which I didn't even go against. To right. this day, nobody even knows why I went to jail. They can't pinpoint it. And yet the only time I ever missed visitation with my kids, because I'm a visitor, you know. Right, yeah. When the state of Texas put me in jail for being a good dad, and that's the entire the entire the conundrum of how retarded the 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 overall family court system is. Yeah, I'll add, add a caveat for people who not finished in this entire video. It has since changed for me, and for me, in the family court system, I finally my kids and I finally got a very very reasonable judge, Judge Billingsley. Right. She was the presiding judge over July 21st, where I was awarded cu uh, primary custody of Blaine. Yeah, and I and have so a clip in that in my video, and I and I linked, and I'll link to the, all your videos again. I have a playlist that goes back to your videos. 
I would encourage people to to read that. And that's so basically it was just all focusing on being there for your kids is what what uh, kept you going through all this. Because I mean, I know a lot of people at some point would consider just saying, you know, I, it's enough. I can't do it anymore. You know, I, you win, you win. And I see why people do it because it is tiresome. And however, I'll have to also give credit to modern technology. I've got a lot of my friends that I've made Facebook friends because of we have something in common as far as parental alienation, right. whether it's fathers or fathers. And they, what I like about it is they perpetually post things about missing their daughter, missing their son, right. uh, crooked judges getting busted for and have for years. And the beautiful thing about this is when they do grow up their children, there is a track, a tracking, a history. Oh, yeah. If they really find out who mom is, who dad is, and they, well, okay, we'll just go look up their Facebook history. Right. No, and that's a good they, point. Well, that, that, that didn't exist. No, because the, the days of sending the letters and the letters being erased and then trying to prove it, you can actually recall. And I have a few people on my channel who have done similar things where they'll actually make videos of the letter, you know, reading the letters that they, they, they're sending their kids with thinking, okay, you know, I mean, I'm trying and at least there's a way to prove it. So no, I hadn't thought right. about and that. So 10 years down the road, it may take 10 or 15 or 20 years, but that child, once that child grows up and they read a date stamp right? and mom is pouring her soul out, dad is pouring her soul out. That is to me powerful enough to overcome the fact that, this alienated child didn't know mom, yeah. didn't know dad. And to see the proof without a doubt, mom tried, dad tried. Yeah. The court system was taken advantage of and got in the way. And there that's the reason I don't know my daughter or my mom. That's the reason I don't know my dad. Yeah. I think that's a powerful enough, powerful enough tool. No, that's amazing. And I could see how that could give you strength through it because as you're as you're fighting, you're like, okay, I'm still you know, I'm still persevering. I'm, I'm showing this and I'm building this body of evidence, I guess. Maybe that's not the right word. That's a, that's okay. So that was, so that was a big play or a big, big way for you. Now, was there ever a time where you were worried that you would just say, okay, I tapped the mat or was that never an option? I never, I've never thought about tapping the mat ever. I was given the option multiple times during court or, and, or during mediation just sign here and be all the court goes away all your rights go away and you don't have to worry about it and i know you've got a pg audience but i basically said no thank you <laughs> i i do not agree with that that uh, that offer oh you know and, and i well, and i hear you on it. i mean because it's it's like they they uh, it's like the system tries to break you to 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 agree to that and you know i've had people on my channel who have who've come to me and said you know when it when is it okay to, to, to give up? And my answer generally is if you're at the point and sometimes when people are through this, they're at the point where you're not just, you're really looking at some really bad decisions, you know, that have permanent, you know, actions, I guess. And if you get to the point that you just can't deal with it, you need, you got to take care of yourself at the beginning. I mean, you know, my hope is, is that with like this interview with you and your channel and then the stuff I'm doing that people can see, okay, there is perseverance here. I mean, like for me to be, for, I mean, as a viewer of your content, I'll say that the day that, uh, you know, I literally, when you were at court, I mean, the entire day I was hitting refresh you know, even when I was at work, it's like, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? It's like, oh my God, it's after five. You know, it's like, I'm looking at the time and, you know, and you guys went late that, that time, um, last summer. And, uh, you know, whenever you pop that video up that, um, you, the judge Billingsley, I think, let you, let your kids decide, let your kids choose who they wanted to live with. And Blaine chose to live with you. And just, I mean, and anybody who, whoever says it, oh, Caleb's a, you know, he's, he's the narcissist or he's the abuser. Watching that video with the joy in your eyes saying, you know, my, my kids get to choose my, my two youngest are going back with their mom, but I get to spend time with them. That's all I ever wanted. I am super happy. And I'm like that right there is not a narcissistic person. That's not an abusive person. That's somebody who cares. And I mean, and you're talking about that was what an eight year battle to get to that point. I mean, so I think that is hugely important that, that, you know, it may seem bleak. You may end up in, you know, in jail for contempt of court, you know, or whatever, but it doesn't mean that it's over, you know, get up every day and keep trying. 
Absolutely. Wholeheartedly, that does not mean it's over. Just because you go years without possibly seeing your child. I've got, I don't want to name names because I'd leave people out, yeah. but I, I know mothers and fathers who have gone years without seeing their child. And they routinely talk about it online. They they make that their mission. Right. And then eventually, eventually, you're going, obviously, they're going to suffer. But eventually, yeah. if that child is really willing to dig deep and find out the truth, it's there. It's all there. And, and I'll say that it, in my experience from seeing other people, you know, within my channel and my community, that happens a lot. It typically takes a while, right? I mean, it typically, I mean, like the eight year, for whatever reason, seems to be the magic number. But um, it it, uh, it does seem to, to change. So um, let's see what I... Uh, Oh, I know what I wanted to ask you. So, you know, when I went, when I first found your stories right before, before the Blaine thing, and, um, I know that, uh, you know, we were trying to talk and then as soon as that whole court thing came up, I absolutely understood why you had to put everything on the back burner. But, but what I wanted to ask you is you seem to be doing pretty good around that time. You know, I mean, your, your videos were pretty positive and, and stuff like that. How was it when Blaine turned 14 and that whole, and I don't want to go into all the details unless you want to, but when that whole catastrophe happened did that just bring all that past memory just crashing down or i mean how did that how did that affect you at that time it was utter disbelief that i'm like really yeah we have to again well and it, and it kind of uh, seemed like it was learned from last time because it, it was i mean it, it, that that whole I mean because I watched I mean when you when when you were posting those videos like you posted one video when it first happened and and you could just feel the the raw emotion and you do a really excellent job of of bouncing back because I mean you did I would say I saw that and I felt it and then like a few days later when you're posting you're like okay all right I got my game face back on and you know you were fighting the good fight so to speak. Well, it, when the when the whole blame thing happened last summer. I had already made it in my mind. I was going to be happy in my life no matter yep. what. And I was. Yeah. I was happy. Knowing that there was still turmoil, my kids were still suffering, yeah. but I'd already made it in my mind. And I had bad times, obviously. Yeah. The month of June was really hard. You know, I was I went on Facebook Live and watched my own son get arrested right in front of him and put in handcuffs for the, I don't know, eighth or tenth time in less than two weeks yeah. the cop wouldn't give him to me i was like he just needs to live with me however i was still happy i was still sleeping i was still eating properly taking care of my body because if you and i encourage all parents that are going through this if you don't take care of your physical body and your mental health anything you do to get your child is in all in vain yeah that's excellent advice take care of your child if you're insane you can't take care of your child you have yeah excellent point it's okay a little nutty because we're all just a little nutty because it's what it is what right. it is you've got to take care of your physical body and your mental health if you want to effectively fight to get your child back no that is that's a that's amazing advice so you know, and that's one of the things I, you know, that's one, and I'm glad we're talking about this because this is the one thing I really wanted to touch bases with you on because it's like just the story of perseverance through everything that you've been through is, is inspirational. I mean, it's just because I could see so, so easily how somebody could just say, okay, you know, where do I sign? All right. Give me the paperwork. I sign. I'm done. Um, you know, and that is, that's tremendous. Uh, and then the payoff, I mean, you know, then a few, I mean, that had to be, you know, hell with, with worrying about your son and then now to be at the point. And just so I don't know if everyone, well, I'm sure everyone of your viewers knows, but you now have custody of all three of your boys. Well, your oldest is an adult, but I mean, so you have custody of your two boys and your daughter has, uh, still living with, with her mom. But I mean, that's tremendous. And that, and that wasn't a battle to get them to decide it. They chose it on their own, right? And I'd like to add to that. Uh, about two to three weeks ago, uh, their mom decided for whatever reason to move. And I'm not even going to say where. It doesn't right. matter. And she offered, straight up offered, would you like? See, I was, that was, I was going to ask. And I said, absolutely. And at first I thought, oh, God, 
Number three. Here we yeah. go again. But I assumed that, but I was wrong. So I, I you know, I had, and that was one of the question I was going to ask um, later. But but since you brought it up, I want to. Uh, um, well, I was always going to say, you know, now that now that the the boys are living with you, it appears that you've been able to work it out with your ex. So how? So was it because of yes, the court yeah. case last year that I mean? So thing are things better with her now, or or I mean, because that's amazing that she offered. I'll I'll just say this: she offered. She asked Hayden where he would like to go, and she also asked London, too. And I asked London, and I kind of assumed I knew what London would say. London said, Daddy, I want to live with Mama. And I said, little that is perfectly fine. I encourage you. And so I drove down there two or three weeks ago, and it was very amicable. We all mutually loaded up Hayden's things, and it was just fine. That's amazing. it's made very clear, even if this doesn't work out with Hayden here, he's welcome to go back. See, it's, a, it's a that, You know, and that's one thing, I mean, uh, that I think people, you know, sometimes, I, you know, they, they, you know, you watch some clips or you see something, you know, you know, you take it out of context. But what you just said right there, I think really dives down to the character. I mean, you know, you're not trying to alienate your kids against their mom. You're. All you ever wanted was Absolutely. them to have a choice. And if they wanted to spend more time with you, they should have that opportunity. And, you know, and then, I mean, because I remember, like I was talking about earlier, that other video, whenever you're like, hey, you know, um, Hayden in London have decided to stay with her mom and I couldn't be happier. And, 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 and that wasn't a lie. Right. And, and it's like, I mean, I've said that a few times when people will comment on it. I'm like, well, watch the video. You know, a person who you're, who you're saying is abusive would not do that. That is not the behavior of somebody that's doing that. I mean, it's, it's phenomenal. And I'm glad you, you said that because it's, I mean, it's really key. It's really critical in all of this. So yeah, we all go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to add that if this would have happened several years ago, it might have been different. But London is 12, about to be 13 in right. June. And knowing the, the, how close she and I are after the fight over to just be with her as she was growing up, that is what made me just perfectly okay for them to move. And it's a, quite a bit further, and I'm not going to see her as much, but her, her mom and I have, have agreed that we'll just basically play it by ear. Wow. London knows who her daddy is. She knows that I've tried. Right. We text here and there, not all the time, but I'm going to make a of make it a point to whenever it's the most convenient for me and the boys or even just the boys or even just me, we'll just hop on the Southwest and fly down there and spend a few days and Uber over and pick her up and go play and talk and catch up. That's awesome. And, and her mom and I have also talked if, you know, her family, some of them still live here when they're in town, they'll, you know, come pick London up and, so that, but that, yeah, that way before. So I was, that's what I was going to ask you. So, I mean, this is a complete change, right? I mean, I'm assuming this is like, like a different person. What what do you attribute that change to? I mean, is it because of the court last summer or, or just finally changing or I mean, what was the catalyst for that? You think? I can only assume that is because of judge Sarah Kate Billingsley. I don't have the proof. It's just a hunch that I have. Judge Billingsley leveled the playing field, gave my kids the voice and the choice to live where they want. And that's what set everything in motion. That's awesome. Uh, being okay. Which only goes to show that I, again, that's why I had that caveat in the beginning when I criticized the family right. court. The family court overall is crap. Right, However, I agree with you. there are obviously and and i am living proof good judges in good places with the ability to just see through all the bs and say i think i think that's starting to happen more often and you know a lot of times when people talk about things on on my channel i'm like you know my impression of family court is they they now realize everyone lies and they're starting to take a more critical look as, okay, is it literally, I mean, is, is there evidence to back up these accusations? But to be, and I've often said that you have to set boundaries and obviously your first, 
you know, or your, your other experience did not really, I mean, it, all that did was enable her to feel that she had more control, but to finally get a point to where it's like, okay, this is the, you know, the, the ground, the ground is level. This is legit. I, to be perfectly honest, I'm surprised to hear that you, that she adapted to that and, and has been able to work, work through that. That's phenomenal. I'm really happy for you, man. Well, regardless of how it came to be, I'm, pleased with where things are now regarding regarding the kids yeah. mom and me extremely happy what happened in the past happened in the yep. past everyone learns everyone goes through things we are fine however well now, that's what okay and that's what i was going to get into because i you know as i mentioned before you know th- that i've seen how you know you you you're good and then you get knocked down is i was fl- i mean and i and i as a viewer of your channel, whenever you posted the video that the attorney general of Texas, what is it, Ken Paxton, and his attorney general office decided to... Deadbeat. To, dead, dead, you've got to get that right. Deadbeat. Dead yeah, deadbeat attorney, attorney, attorney general, general Ken Paxton seized yeah. your account right before the holidays, if I remember correctly. Three weeks and, before Christmas. And, so, and, and we'll jump into it. And, and the other thing on that, what, what impressed me by it is, I mean, you could tell you were irritated, but you still seem to be positive about it. And in the midst of all this, you now have your other son living with you. So, I mean, yeah, if you go ahead and talk about that yeah. and how you're, how you're dealing with that. And, and it, you know, it seems like you're kind of on a crusade to, uh, to, to obviously hold the deadbeat King Paxton accountable, but to try to get some awareness and change on this. So what's your, your I mean, so go into that story. Everything had died down. The battle between my children's mother and I was yeah. over. And when a, traditionally in America, when it's over, yeah. it's over. It's like anywhere. It's yep. over. The Japanese people and the American people were not fighting anymore. It's over. There were some bad things that happened. Yes. Atomic bombs. Bad, bad stuff happened. It's over. It, and at that time, in December, early December of yeah. last year, everything was fine. We were working it out as a family between ourselves. And then Ken Paxton sticks his nose in business. He had no place sticking his nose in and froze my bank account. And had I mailed off my child support check and my they rent would check, they would back, and then I'd be a real criminal for bounced checks. Fortunately, that didn't happen. I got lucky. And so the reason I call Ken Paxton the deadbeat attorney general of Texas is because the attorney general of Texas is over all child support daily. He's the one, or she, they are the ones it's their who program. take all the money and just make the world a better place and give it to right. the other parent. To so about $4 billion a year in wow. Texas alone. Your bank account is seized by the attorney general for you being behind on child support. And yes, I was technically behind. And I'll get to that in just a minute. I was technically behind. Then the it's not written, but it's just generally known. Oh, you're a deadbeat. The attorney general got involved and seized your bank account. And that's what he wanted. And I can only assume, I know that I've been targeted. I've got little birds that have that have told me, but I can only assume that people were throwing because people were throwing my name around to Caleb for governor, blah, blah, blah. And my case was getting some attention. They thought, huh, we'll just we'll squash yeah. this guy and we'll get his life living hell. There's no way he'll come public about that. Get his bank account set, bank account seized. And it kind of yeah, he, they he probably should have watched happen. all your videos of the past, and then they would have better had a, had a better idea of the character and who they were dealing with. Yeah, if I was Ken Paxton, I would I would fire his staff that didn't watch all of my content before make giving him the recommendation to make such a stupid yeah. decision. I, that's uh, it, it's you know that's what I was gonna say. You know, my next thing was moving forward. Are you hoping to? What are you hoping to accomplish about? bringing awareness like to this deadbeat dad label because a lot of times i think it's thrown around and it's not legit i mean like you're not a deadbeat dad yes it's embarrassing it's and overall to yeah. most people in most situations in most cases it's humiliating no one legitimately wants you can look up on youtube anywhere about deadbeat dads right, getting yeah. arrested and look 
county sheriffs having roundups for arresting deadbeat dads, and the media just yeah. roasts them. Oh, you're X amount of dollars behind. You don't right. have your kids. You're just one step above a child yeah. abuser. And I say that is yep. BS. To quote some twits out of Florida, it's BS that to, to necessarily label a father yeah. or a mother. Yeah, that's true. It, it does. does. I do have people on my too. channel who that is. That's happened to the uh, mom. Simply not being able to pay what is mandated. And what I was going to get back at, the reason, not the only reason, I was already behind when I got to court because I'd, moved, I'd lived in San Antonio to finish raising my kids. And I finally got the opportunity to come back to Odessa, make some money in the oil field, which is what I've known for right. 20, 25 years. And I'm trying to catch up. Like uh, six weeks prior to going to court, I, I paid in, I don't know, eight or 10,000 wow. bucks to try to catch up. Okay, on July 21st, Judge Billingsley awarded me custody of blame. Therefore, support should change. I had custody of one third of my three right. minor children. So, therefore, because my child support was ordered to go down, and I was awarded to receive child support. And to this Still? day, to this very day seven plus months later that paperwork is not done i've not received a dime of child support and i don't blame the kid's mom by any means if she doesn't have the orders in place to mail it through right. the san antonio system yeah of the office of the training child support division she doesn't get right. credit so i don't blame her i wouldn't pay either that is why i held off i was like okay it's going to take few weeks maybe a month to get the paperwork done and, and when it gets lowered it will be from the data it was awarded so i mean right i mean my understanding is, is that that when the judge finally signs the order it'll be effective from whenever he originally did it it's not gonna be effective today i mean so yes. you're gonna get credit for all that yeah right i would assume but i just assumed also that after maybe a month six weeks tops the papers would be in order right. or be done judge bill would sign right, her yeah. own orders and a dollar amount, a lower dollar amount would have been set and I, we would right. just move forward. So, I mean, happened. what did you, I mean, are you, have you talked to your attorney or somebody about, I mean, I mean, how long is this supposed to take? Oh, yeah. There's certain okay. parts All of right. this I can't talk about, but yes, my attorney is fully aware of how crazy okay. this is, that it's been That's insane. seven months, my bank account was seized. And in between that time, the kid's mom and I mutually agreed, like on a friendly level, to now I have right. two thirds custody of my three minor children, and we still don't have orders. We still don't have anything to go. It's a complete mess. And Ken Paxton, I believe, is pretending hmm. to ignore me. I know I don't have, you know, the biggest following in the world, but he's pretending to ignore me. And my fight for this, pointing out how blatantly obvious it is that his office has taken advantage of someone well, like me. Well, they're going to take advantage of you. They'll take advantage and of anybody. That Exactly. They, right. That they'll take advantage of me. They'll take – I just happen to be in the position to where I've got – Well, a, you have a voice. And I speak out about it. Yeah. A lot of people would love to speak out. I know they would. I talk to them yeah. all the time. But nobody listens. He's pretending not to listen to me. I know better. I know that he knows who I specifically who I am, without a doubt. So yeah, that I would imagine. Ken Paxton has only been attorney general for about three years. After he won, barely won, because he's not really liked anyways. He just had some friends in high places. He was indicted by a grand jury in a federal grand jury in Texas on three counts of basically being a fraud. He's a crook. <laughs> So since he is in charge of the attorneys who get paid, who are prosecuting and defending him, uh, I and mean, I'm not a lawyer, he right. muddied the waters, and it went from one county to another county. He was uh, technically arrested, but he didn't have to put the towel around his neck like right. all the. I've seen that video. Of that arrested. He's muddied up the waters, and it's really disheartening. It's looking like he's going to get away with whatever it is he's the fraud he's accused of however 
since Ken passed it, Ken Paxton made this personal and pissed me off and came after me and made basically became my own personal Grinch by stealing my kids Christmas. Wow. I'm going to be personal. Ken Paxton may be able to get away with finding one schmuck juror to say, oh, not guilty. But he cannot persuade all voters to never listen to what little old Caleb Leverett, notorious dad of Texas, has to say. He can't get around it. And so right, yeah. if I ever see the side of the jail cell that I saw, even though outside of the fraud, just the fact that he stole my bank account right. for trying to make me, label me as a bad dad – that aside, you know, he sh- I think he should go experience what I – it's looking like he's going to get away with it. I hope not. I hope I'm wrong. But yeah. I don't think he's going to get it reelected. He's up for reelection this November, and I encourage any and all Texans that are registered to vote. Yes, I am a libertarian slash libertarian anarchist, and there's you know, the discussion about voting. I'm not even going to get into that. I I'm, I'm think I'm going to start voting again myself, specifically – to go against it. Yeah, it, the whole system is is you know corrupt, and I think a lot of people don't realize how much power the state has. I I had a friend of mine who um, uh, his ex turned him into child support services. You know he was paying. Um, they've been divorced a long time, so you know wasn't paying through the state, so they didn't have a good accounting of it. But uh, you know, I mean, and and it's it's it's. I mean, that's why when I saw when I saw you go through that, and I like this other person I was dealing with, uh, you know, on a personal level who was going through it. I mean, it was I mean, it nearly broke that person. And to see all the adversity that you've been through and how you've been able to just keep a positive attitude on it is really, really tremendous. And then turn it into a cause, and then turn it into something positive. Not well, kind of positive. I mean, you're bringing. I mean, bottom line, you're bringing awareness to the corruption uh, of of how this system is, and how once you get in the midst of it, it's hard to get out of it. Right. I mean, and even though you and your ex have have come to a mutual understanding, it doesn't matter. Once the machine starts rolling, it has power to to do things. And and I think that that's an important message to get out there. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping that in our lifetime that we'll start to see more changes in this to where it's more which it's where it's fair. You know, I mean, the fact like where, where you were talking about how your your business went down, you're still on the hook to pay that until you get somebody who says, OK, yeah, your child support can get lowered. You still have to pay. I mean, it's not. It's it's a very frustrating thing. So what 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 I want the next thing and we'll wrap this up is, you know, okay. So what exactly do you have for advice? So somebody who's watching this video right now and they're in the beginning stages of it and they're dealing with you know you know their their ex is saying they're a horrible person they shouldn't see their kids and and it look you know they're gonna talking about moving. I mean, what advice would you give to that person who's looking at this right now, going, oh my God, what do I do? How do I survive this? I would give both parents the same advice at the same time and hope that they would both send this video and countless other ones that I've got each other these videos keep yeah. the divorce out of the court regardless of what you think of your ex the ex-wife the ex-husband does not matter the child loves both, both of parents you. they love both parents and as soon as you start bad mouthing one that parent, they don't want to hear it. No matter how right you are, <laughs> even yeah. if that ex is a total douche canoe, <laughs> it doesn't want to hear it. No, they you're right. That's that's they excellent advice. On their own, and if you're going to lose half of whatever you got, no matter what, at right. the least, you might as well. Let the children, let your own kids have the benefit of taking advantage of that wealth with mom and with dad. Because if you go to the family courts, it's like going to Vegas. You're not going to win. Yeah. You'll win every, every now and then somebody wins for a while. Right. But ultimately, the casino wins. Yeah. The casino gets the money. Yeah, exactly. The don't win overall. It's That's just how the family court is. Yeah. You're further ahead go ahead 50 50 right up front take your assets and your debts split them right down the middle yeah try that out if the kids want a little more time with dad a little more time with mom just work it out because as soon as you get a family court involved the judge involved 
more than likely that judge has been through family court as well. Yeah. He's already she's already pissed off. They're like, screw you, buddy. Bam. Yeah. You don't you, you, you don't know where they're going to lie. Maybe they're going to be sympathetic. Maybe not. And then once you go into that meat grinder, you don't know what you're going to get on the other side. Fortunately, I was given Judge Whaling and Judge Rex as my first two judges. But fortunately, I got Judge Billingsley. I lucked out. I got a very level-headed judge who yeah. was actually here. And she didn't come down on either one of us. She was very stern, you know, no bad mouthing. Yeah. This fight, this family stopped. She was very stern, and I believe her. <laughs> and, and well, that's I, awesome. I, and she's stopping. I, I that my advice is regardless of what you think of that person, because obviously you're getting divorced. There's a reason you're splitting up. You don't like them. We get it. Yeah. Kids get it. Amicably stop it. Go to a mediator. Go through mediation and split amicably and take some deep breaths because you've got a long time until those kids adapt. Yeah, and that is true. Just to what's going what's going through now obviously that's not people are going to argue with that and say well i can't you can't deal with a narcissist and i totally get that now yeah. it time doesn't work it didn't work for me we tried well I, tried. I mean and that that's the problem with the mediation side is it if the other person's like okay so um sure i'll agree but i want full custody you know you get once you know one weekend in the summer you know they always come up with an unrealistic thing but you at least got to try right I mean, I hear what you're. Uh, I hear yeah, what you're saying on that. Hey, and I'm, yeah, I'm glad. I mean, honestly, I mean, your your story is probably the first. Now, I have no idea, you know, the details of, of your ex or whatever. I mean, I I have my opinion of what I've seen and and you know whatever. But to 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 see that now, I mean, even though it's been eight years or so into the in, to get to this point, that you guys have been able to work it out. That's phenomenal. That's something you generally don't hear. I mean, in my situation, six years into it, it's the same. Now, I don't respond the same way, and I focus on my kids, and I you know that's you know I focus on making my environment as stable as possible, and I. I focus on building the relationship with my kids and I pretty much just keep the ex out of, out of it, but it's the same bowl. I mean, it's the same shenanigans, the same tactics just over and over and over again. And I, it honestly seems like it will never change. So I just, you know, but to see in your situation that it has, that's phenomenal. You, you have to get real clever. You've got to get, whenever we got to the point where I would have to smuggle phones in, it sounds yeah. terrible to smuggle phones back and forth. Yep. I had, to show up at Lunch with London. I even had a hashtag going there for a while, Lunch with London. Hmm. You know, wasn't technically supposed to be there, supposedly, but I didn't care. I happened to be in town, and I just snuck in a, a little way just to say, little girl, look, I'm here. Yeah. Let's have 30 minutes at lunch. We're in a school. I mean, yeah. really. Go to the lunch room. What? You know, sit, yeah. No, I, I hear you, man. And I mean, it's, and it's, it's sad that you have, you know, that it gets to that point. Right. I mean, and it's like, I think people on other sides should look at it. And I, what, and what you said is what I say a lot in a lot of my videos is that your kids want to love both parents. I mean, we may know, or we may have an idea what we think, you know, how much a piece of crap the other person is at the end of the day, that's, that's our child's mom or dad. And they want to love that person. You know, they're going to have to, if, if later in life they make the decision that, hey, maybe something's not quite right, we can't be the one to tell them that. We have to, if they want to talk about mommy or they want to talk yeah. about daddy or they want to see daddy at lunch, they should be able to have that opportunity to do that. So, no, I absolutely agree with you on that one. So, well, may, maybe little, little baby steps at a time that you'll be able to make, uh, make some more changes and, and start changing minds and hearts. I know, I mean, just seeing some of your, the comments and your followers, uh, I can tell you're already doing that. So when we go to wrap this up, I mean, do you have any final thoughts or anything you really want to share before we, uh, we end this interview? It's just going to be a real interesting turn of events to see how it goes down with Ken Paxton. But hey, Caleb, thank you for taking the time to talk, talk to us. Uh, like I've said before, your story is very inspirational about all the stuff that you've had to deal with, with you, you and your kids and how you've just maintained that positive attitude. And, and I'm really grateful to have the opportunity for you to tell your side of the story and just how you had that strength to go through that. So thank you very much for that. Dwayne, thanks for just staying up with my story. You're always a, a joy to, to talk to. Um, I'll, I'll just thanks thanks so much it, it means a lot to me I'm very humbled 
Oh, okay. Thank- All right, Caleb. All right, guys. Well, there you go. I'll leave the links uh, in the description and in the card so you can check out Caleb's story. I encourage you to take a look at it to see how some of this stuff can play out and how you can actually persevere through it. So on that, I will catch you guys on the next video.